Buongiorno. Good morning, everybody. From Sala delle Colonne, Roberto Cicuto, the president of the Biennale, the curator of the 59th uh, International Art Exhibition of the Biennale of Venice, Cecilia Alemani, will illustrate this program that has been waited for for two years. This great event is taking place after managing in 2020 and in 2021 to organize almost everything except the postponement of the uh, architecture exhibition by one year. I thank all those present here, all those connected from uh, home. I would like to uh, tell you that we have here with us the director of the music sector, Lucia Ronchetti, the new curator of the next architecture exhibition, Leslie Locco, Gianni Forte to represent here the board, Ricci Forte for theater, the directors of the theater sector. They are all here because after the press conference, we will meet to go on with the, the dialogue among arts. Um, Wayne McGregor, the director of uh, the dance sector, and Alberto Barbera for cinema will join us because the Biennale is intending to continue after the Quieted Muses exhibition, the only exhibition curated by the sick directors, coordinated by Cecilia Alemani herself. We want to continue this, di this dialogue among arts that wants to show that the Biennale is the home to all kinds of arts. After Cecilia's contribution, we will be joined by Carlo Giordanetti or by Swatch, a partner of Biennale Arte. Some uh, figures, some information. The exhibition will open on April the 23rd and will continue until November the 27th. We have decided, we decided last year the day of the inauguration of the architecture Biennale. We are doing the same this year knowing that this will be possible respecting the anti-COVID regulations and following the evolution of the pandemic. We have acquired uh, an extraordinary experience, unfortunately, in realizing events in person with thousands, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors with architecture. This year, we will continue to follow the evolution of the situation, and we will implement all the controls and procedures that will allow all those working for the Biennale, uh, the staff, uh, the artists, and the visitors uh, to be at the Biennale in total safety. One additional aspect will be the respect of the intention to reach our neutral carbon position. We started this with the cinema festival. We continue with architecture. We have collected all data that might allow us, with the collaboration of professionals in this sector, to monitor carbon emissions our events are producing. We won't certainly be able to implement all the concrete measures that might enable us to reduce uh, the emission uh, to zero, but we have activated economic compensations by financing initiatives that are being developed all over the world to reduce emissions. All of this will bring us, we hope, uh, within uh, 2022, to reach important results, and the first is that we have already done something. We have the whole of the energy used by the Biennale comes from green sources. One last comment on carbon neutrality. We will provide all those participating in the Biennale, visitors, workers, some uh, behavioral, some protocols for behavior, suggesting them how to behave. We hope they will respect our suggestions, because this will help us reach our objective. After two years, an extraordinary journey 
made virtually most of the time. Cecilia is coming here to Venice with the monster exhibition, an extraordinarily rich exhibition full of proposals that has a formula I like a lot. Sections, sectors, subjects, uh, the exhibition is uh, structured in have inside themselves the source of inspiration for the artists, artists that have come before contemporary artists in a kind of continuity we like a lot in the Biennale with their predecessors. We will try and uh, discover directly the sources of inspiration for our contemporary artists. And I thank you, Cecilia, for this, because this is one of the things we consider the most important for all kinds of arts. Cecilia has also done something else. She has materialized a dream I had uh, when I came here in Venice to provide also for the art sector a college section. You know that for dance, theater, music, and cinema, we have college initiatives for young artists who are already artists. They have not reached the peak of their career. They meet curators and tutors who help them and accompany them in a journey at the end of which some of them have their uh, works uh, screened or staged in the Biennale. And after uh, a long uh, work of selection, after many applications uh, uh, responding to our call, four of these artists will see their works exhibited in the international art exhibition out of competition, but not in a specific section, but mingled with the works of the other artists. We also have some new national participations. Five countries are for the first time at the art exhibition, Cameroon, Namibia, Nepal, Oman, and Uganda. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Uzbekistan that were grouped in one single pavilion before are presenting their own pavilions this year. We will also have the Italian pavilion at the Tese delle Vergini in the Arsenale, promoted by the Ministry of Culture, by the Direction for Contemporary Art and, Ar and Architecture, curated by Eugenio Viola. And the press conference will be held in the forthcoming days from uh, the uh, offices of the Ministry of Culture. I stop here. I want to thank all those who have always accompanied us, the sponsors that have supported the previous uh, editions of the art exhibition, who have never abandoned us, also in the most difficult times of the pandemic. I'm looking for the list of our sponsors. I've already mentioned our main partner, Swatch. We will listen uh, to the contribution by Carlo Giordanetti later on. I will list them afterwards, and I pass the floor at once to Cecilia Alemani. Thank you, President Cicuto, for your kind introduction. Thank you all for being here in this room, the journalists and our colleagues of the institutions uh, of Venice. Uh, I'm glad to be here in person speaking, telling you about the next art exhibition that we'll inaugurate in 11 weeks. But it is extremely moving for me to be here uh, in person, as this is the first time. And I want to thank President Cicuto because we have been working together for two years in a great harmony. Although we have mostly met uh, on screen uh, in the portal of our computers, uh, it is a great joy for me to be here sitting beside you. I want to thank President Paratta, who appointed me 
two years ago, who is not here today, but I hope he is connected online and listening to us. His presence and his uh, influence is still very strong here in the Biennale. As you know, the Biennale was forced to postpone architecture exhibition first and then the art exhibition, something that had not happened since the Second World War. And this reminds us that we are still living in an extraordinary historic moment. For those who are following us from home, we are speaking from the beautiful room, uh, Sala delle Colonne. It is half full. It is a miracle being here in person, which is why I want to thank, really, all the artists, uh, the supporters, uh, the Biennale team and the curatorial team, because this kind of normality is the result of great efforts working in a very difficult condition at in a unique historic moment. We will share, I will share with you many details of uh, the exhibition. I will show you many images. I will tell you about the structure of the exhibition. I will tell you about the artists, their works, the special project, but I will also uh, tell you about the catalog. This is just part, a small part of what you will see. There will be many surprises in April and many images uh, you will see here are of previous works by the artists because many works are still being produced as they are new productions. The exhibition title is The Milk of Dreams, a title taken from uh, a book of fairy tales by Leonora Carrington, uh, a surrealist uh, artist from England. She ran during the Second World War to Mexico, where she lived the rest of her life. During the 1940s and in the 1950s, she had two kids, and she started drawing fantastic stories of hybrid, hybrid creatures on the walls of her house to collect them later in a small copybook. You see a page of it here on the right of this uh, image. A few years later, the stories were collected in a booklet, the title of which is The Milk of Dreams. Uh, These books tell of fantastic stories of hybrid mutant beings that uh, transform from human to uh, animal uh, to mechanical, uh, imagining a world in which everybody can change, can transform and become something else. And I've decided to choose the figures of Carrington's uh, transformations and Leonora Carrington herself as uh, companions for my journey that crosses the metamorphosis of the bodies and the definitions of what is human. As you can imagine, the origin of this exhibition was uh, unique. I was appointed in January 2020. And the research stage, the learning stage, had to be done remotely from my cabinet, uh, from my office in New York, because I could never uh, travel in these two years. But I met hundreds and hundreds of artists by Zoom, obviously, and if on one hand not being in their studio is sad because you cannot see their works uh, in, in person, you cannot activate your senses. From another point of view, I had a large number of very intimate and confessional conversations with the artists. I'm sure you all uh, do the same. You spend hours and hours on, on your PC speaking with perfect strangers for hours and sharing this strange feeling of intimacy, uh, like if it was the end of the world that has influenced our exhibition. These conversations with artists are at the uh, origin of a number of questions that also originate from the historic time we are living in, uh, from the fact that we have experienced a pause, a creative pause uh, in our uh, 
uh, everyday life. And I've tried to sum them up in these uh, uh, questions you see on the screen. How is the definition of the human changing? What differentiates plants and animals, human and non-human? What are our responsibilities towards the planet, other uh, other beings and other life forms, and what would life look like without us? These are some of the questions that uh, uh, permeate uh, the exhibition and are the result of the conversation with the artists. And then I try to sum up these themes, existential themes, in three major themes that cannot be defined as sections, but that are intertwined in an harmonic way uh, through the exhibition. The representation of bodies and their metamorphosis, the relationship between individuals and technologies, and the connection between bodies and the earth. As uh, Rosi Braidotti says, an Italian uh, important philosopher, for post-human thought, uh, the end of the centrality of man, becoming machine and becoming earth. As regards the first theme, uh, the uh, exhibition is rooted in the post-human thought. And many contemporary artists are imagining a post-human condition, challenging the universal, uh, the Western presumed universal ideal of uh, a white male man of reason uh, uh, as the measure of all things. Instead, they propose uh, uh, different alliances, uh, fantastic bodies, uh, porous and hybrid beings. And this is why the exhibition includes a large majority of female artists and gender non-conforming artists that reflect an international scenario of great ferment by artists who are challenging the figure of man as the center of the universe. The second theme is the relation among individuals and technologies. It is a very complex relationship. If before COVID, we were living with great uh, optimism about technology, uh, a world in which technology was uh, promising us uh, an endless uh, perfectioning of the human body to transform it into uh, something eternal, immortal, and on the other hand, we had the dread of a total takeover by the machine. Well, this relationship, complicated and polarized relationship with the technology, has almost been overturned during the pandemic when we realized uh, how our bodies are fragile and mortal also in front of an invisible force. And in the most critical times, the physical relationship with our beloved, with our families and friends became impossible and was uh, mediated somehow by the screen and by the different devices we normally bring with ourselves. So the technology, on one hand, has made us, has brought us closer, but has also separated us. The links that link uh, bodies to the earth. Continuing with the idea of a post-human, many uh, artists are imagining a future world in which uh, we will have the end of anthropocentrism uh, with a new communion between uh, the other uh, beings, uh, an animal world, and with the Earth in a non-hierarchical relationship, not based on extraction or exploitation, but rather based on harmony of symbiosis with other species and other forms of life. Other artists are reacting to the dissolution of supposedly universal systems, rediscovering localized form of knowledge and new politics of identity. 
Before mentioning the works of art, I would like to uh, give you a few figures. The Milk of Dreams includes 213 artists coming from 58 countries. It is an international exhibition with the largest participation of different countries. It was a great effort. We have made uh, working uh, from remote, but it was very important for the content of the exhibition to include artists coming from regions or countries that are not normally represented in the international exhibitions. More than 180 artists are participating for the first time to the international art exhibition. We will have 80 new productions, and I'm glad to include 26 Italian artists. To date, the exhibition includes 1,433 works of art and objects. And again, allow me to thank the Biennale team, because we have been working for months uh, asking for loans. We are still working at that. The Milk of Dreams is articulated in the classical uh, uh, premises of the Biennale, the Central Pavilion at the Giardini, and in the Arsenale, uh, Artillerie, Corderie, many outer spaces up to the Giardino delle Vergini. As President uh, uh, Cicuto was saying, uh, we have uh, some small historic uh, thematic exhibitions I defined as time capsules, grouping works by artists, mainly of the 20th century, with some exceptions, that focus on the themes of this exhibition, facing in a totally different uh, time the main themes of the exhibition. They have uh, uh, different objectives to question the central role of certain uh, canonized histories that have uh, prevailed in the current uh, history of art by telling stories that were considered as of, mi of minor importance in the past and creating connections among the works of the past and the contemporary works that will be exhibited around them to create like different time experiences in the exhibition, which is why we can define this exhibition as a, a transhistoric exhibition, creating a dialogue between contemporary works and the past, including different generations and many different stories, histories, stories of exclusion. The uh, design of these capsules was made in collaboration with the design duo Forma Fantasma. In particular, as regards the capsules, they have created special atmospheres and special layouts that are very different from, your, from what you will see exhibited in the uh, rest of the exhibition. It will be like entering a different time uh, uh, capsule. Uh, everything starts with the first historic capsule, the Witch's Cradle, from a work by Maya Deren. In this presentation, you will see the works by 30 artists, dancers, writers, and cultural figures. This is a rendering of what you will see there, adopting the metamorphosis, ambiguity, and fragmentation of the body to challenge the idea of a man that was uh, held in Renaissance and Enlightenment. Uh, there is a dominion of the uh, marvelous uh, going over the duality between human and nature, animated and inanimated, in favor of a hybrid reality and fluctuating relationships, uh, disobedient bodies, uh, revolting against the classical uh, representations. These artists are very close to the great avant-garde movements of the beginning of the 20th century. Surrealism, Futurism, Bauhaus, uh, the Harlem Renaissance, and Negritude. And this 
capsules would also contain many important loans from different international museums, works that were never exhibited before in Italy and in Europe, like this beautiful painting by Remedio Svaro, an artist who was a friend of Leonora Carrington's, with whom she shared uh, many experiences in Mexico, but also works by Leonora Carrington herself, this portrait of Madame Dupin uh, representing a woman with the face transforming into a butterfly. Other artists uh, enjoy themselves by uh, overturning the traditional image of women in uh, history of art, like Neonor Fini, who reverts the role of the muse uh, lying on a bed, uh, placing a man, a young boy, on the bed. Or Gertrude Arendt, a photographer who in the 1930s through masks and uh, makeup, uh, describe different types of femininity. And then there are other artists who adopt the amputation or mutilation of the body, as in this extraordinary painting by Itel Cohen, a Scottish artist, uh, uh, with a painting coming from the Israel Museum, part of the Arturo Schwart collection, representing three bodies, an intersex female and male body, or, or Carol Rama, the, who in her Appassionata series represents bodies, uh, amputated bodies lying on the floor. Some artists uh, take back mythologic or traditional archetype uh, figures like the Sphinx. You see here a painting by a surrealist artist, Jane Graverall, representing a Sphinx that is uh, made contemporary uh, and technological with a body uh, that is almost a robot, whereas on the other side of the ocean, Meta Warwick Fuller, an artist who was part of the Harlem Renaissance, is showing us a, a woman standing like a mummy but uh, taking off uh, the cloth from our body. Again, Harlem Renaissance, we're glad to have this painting by Lois Milo Jones, who recovered the myth of the great Mother Africa, whereas we also have other artists depicting the symbiosis with nature, as in this painting by Dorothea Tanning or in the drawings by Baia Mayedin, an, uh, an artist from Algeria, who paints the power of women with bright colored clothing, like princesses in relation with animals and nature. This is a preview of what you will see in these capsules. Uh, there are many uh, more works. Uh, it is like entering in uh, a beating heart of the exhibition. Outside the exhibition, you will see works by contemporary artists who continue uh, analyzing the same themes you have seen in the capsules 70, 80, 100 years later. I hope they will uh, create a relation, a connection among different uh, generations. You see here a work by Christina Quarles, uh, an artist from Los Angeles, representing bodies that transform and uh, uh, expand outside uh, the limits of the canvas. Andrea Ursuta will uh, uh, exhibit a number of sculptures of uh, hybrid beings uh, combinating parts of the body with objects she found. And then a Polish artist, Aneta Grezikowska, in her Mama series, uh, um, photographs her daughter playing with uh, a silicon puppet uh, resembling the artist herself, uh, thus uh, reverting, upverting the caring, the care relationship between mother and daughter. Ovartaci, a Danish artist who for more than five decades was uh, uh, in a mental hospital, he created there a world made by imaginary uh, creatures reinventing the categories of gender and sexuality both in his heart and in her life. And then Shuvinaya Shona, 
an Inuit art. It shows the world in which human beings and animals share uh, the world. And Birgit Jurgensen from Austria, an aesthetic from Austria, depicts this strange metamorphosis, half human and uh, uh, shellfish or uh, sea creatures. Akosua Adoma Ovuso, uh, an American director from uh, of Ghanese origin, she combines uh, uh, popular stories and fairy tales. Uh, uh, intertwining them with contemporary events, whereas the Italian artist Sara Enrico will present a number of new sculptures made in concrete with uh, um, intertwined bodies. Chiara Enzo is another Italian artist from Venice. She created these very small uh, fragmented paintings. Uh, they are very small. Uh, they seem very large on the screen, but they are hyper-realistic details, fragments of body and skins. The second time capsule is the technology of enchantment. It introduces a new theme, the theme of the relationship between the body and technology, studying the concept of membrane of screen. It includes a number of Italian artists of the 1960s that, are, that were close to uh, programmed and kinetic art. Through the abstract and kibernetic language, they reflected on the relationships between abstraction and the body resorting to innovative technologies for the time and uh, anticipating many of the concerns of our digital era. Grazia Varisco, Laura Grisi, Nanda Vigo, but also Marina Pollonio, Lucia Di Luciano, and Dada Maino. The relationships between the bodies and technology continue outside the capsule in the most uh, contemporary part of the exhibition. You will see there a uh, Swedish artist, Ulla Wiggen, who in the 1960s, in the same years as uh, the programmed art was uh, prevailing, uh, took part in an important exhibition, Cybernetic Serendipity, that was held at the ICA in London, uh, an exhibition that included the engineers and uh, computer experts. She was very young, and she exhibited paintings that are like portraits of machines and computers from the inside, as seen from the inside. And they are painted on gauze. Uh, 60 years after those first paintings, the Wiggins still paint, is still painting uh, the human body as a machine. And she depicts uh, these irises of her friends in this hyper-realistic way. Uh, like turning the uh, vision of the viewer. Agnes Dennis, uh, an Hungarian artist living in the US, in the 1960s, she created these two great prints telling the evolution of the body, the evolution of man on one side in the blue area and the evolution of technology in the other, in the brown one. Whereas uh, the uh, crazy pixels by Lillian Schwartz uh, are the first experiments uh, of video uh, made uh, with uh, a computer. Leonora de Barros will present a number of photographs with uh, close-ups on a female face, interacting with machines, uh, typing machines, or uh, computer. Uh, and the language of the body, the body and the language are the subject of a third capsule. Uh, it collects artists and writers who in the 19th and 20th century uh, resorted to expanded forms of language as a tool for emancipation. The exhibition 
not only includes visual artists, but also intellectuals, writers, people who, with their lives, imagined new possibilities for being. The uh, exhibition is uh, drawing inspiration from a legendary exhibition of the uh, Venice Biennale, Materializzazione del Linguaggio, an exhibition that took place in 1978, curated by Mirella Bentivoglio during the 38th uh, International Art Exhibition, collecting 80 female artists who were using poetry to produce art. Some of them are present in this uh, small capsule, Tommaso Binga, Ilse Garnier, and Mary Ellen Salt. These artists, uh, with their works of concrete poetry, material poetry, deconstruct uh, language, splitting up traditional phrases and occupying the page in a physical, material way. There will also be a group of mediums, uh, Eusapia Palladino, Lingia Gazzera, artists or clairvoyants uh, who use their body to communicate with other dimensions. You see here some uh, photographs of Linda Gazzera and her seances, or Eusapia Palladino, again working as a medium. They use a language which is not based on text and verbs, but rather on the body itself. In the same way, uh, a Spanish artist, Josefa Tolera, claimed her drawings were guided by spirits. And then a group of artists who have based their work on automatic writing, uh, Unica Zurn or automatic uh, writing like uh, Mini Evans uh, describing hallucinations and visions, uh, mystic visions in her beautiful uh, compositions of flowers. Outside this capsule, the viewer will meet, uh, will see works of art that continue to investigate the language in different ways political ways as well, as in the works by Sable Smiths or in the abstraction by Browning Katz or in new drawings by the American artist Amy Silman, who resorts to abstraction and figurative art to create an alphabet where you can also find fragments of bodies. And then there are the graphic paintings by, Grafli by Jacqueline Humphreys related to the glyphs by Carla Cardi and the machine language that, uh, that um, molds the works by Vera Molnar. In contrast uh, with these uh, hyper-technological scenarios, the pavilion also uh, uh, exhibits uh, paintings of new symbiosis between different creatures. A room will be devoted to the Portuguese artist Paula Rego, who only recently received the attention she deserved. She had uh, an exhibition, a personal exhibition at the Tate in London. She has been working for political and social uh, uh, causes, uh, abortion in Portugal, for example. She reinterpreted many of the tales and of the traditional legends as uh, uh, Kafka's metamorphosis. These symbiotic creatures also appear in the uh, paintings uh, of a Chilean artist, Cecilia Vicuna, works of the 1970s. There will also be a site-specific uh, uh, work by her uh, dealing with the fragile ecosystem of the Venice Lagoon. Cecilia will uh, dialogue with the cellular paintings, the organic paintings by an, Indi by, uh, 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 um, an artist from Ethiopia, Americo Keb Bernau, but also with the soft idols by an Indian artist, Miralini Mukherjee. In the 
Giardino Scarpa, we will find the works by Simon Fatal, a Syrian artist who has been working for decades on the human figure, abstracting it. And she has created these figures uh, that are in bronze and ceramics, half physical and half abstract. And we also have a performative artwork by Alexandra Pirici, a Romanian artist, who will present a choreography of human bodies. We hope this will be always accessible. Uh, six performances will be organized and will tell about symbiotic uh, relationships among different individuals. And now we move to the Arsenale. Corderie, in the Corderie, uh, the atmosphere is totally different. Uh, we find artists who look at the relationship between individuals and the earth. Uh, the exhibition starts with a presentation by the Cuban artist Belkis Ayon, who uh, took part in the Biennale in 1993, she will present some works on paper with uh, the technique of holography, describing a matriarchal community, drawing inspiration from African-Cuban traditions. Many artists in the exhibition uh, bring uh, uh, to the surface the mythopoietic dimension of the works, like the artists from Eritrea, uh, Fikre Grebrezius, or the oniric vision by Portia Zavahera. At the beginning of the arsenal, we will find an installation by an artist an artist from Argentina, Gabriel Chaili, monumental sculptures made in raw uh, clay, like idols of a new Mesoamerican fantastic civilization. The relationship between man and nature and the earth is celebrated by many of the participating artists, among them the Lithuanian Egle Buditive, telling about young uh, girls and boys lost in a uh, forest in Lithuania, or a group of young people uh, depicted by Zheng Bo, shot by Zheng Bo, uh, while uh, uh, creating uh, intense relationships, uh, sexual relationships with nature. A similar feeling of enchantment, of magical enchantment, is to be found in a group of artists who tell us about the end of the great narrations, rediscovering local traditions. Britta Maracata Labba, a Sami artist, she creates this beautiful tapestry uh, depicting scenes of the everyday life of the Sami population in the north of Sweden but also the hallucinations mixing nature and oniric visions by J. Deres Bell uh, confirm us how the artist was convinced that art can become a point of strength in fighting for the recognition of the rights of the indigenous population. And then we have the first historic capsule in the Arsenale. There are two in the Arsenale. The first deals with a strange title, a leaf, a gold, a shell, a net, a bag, a sling, a sack, a bottle, a pan, a box, a container. A quotation from a book that was very important for me, a book by the sci-fi author Ursula Le Guin, who reinterprets the birth of the human civilization and of technology, upverting, reverting uh, this story, uh, abandoning the first uh, uh, invention as a spear or as an axe used by hunters to, uh, to go hunting for mammoths. But rather, she find uh, uh, the origin of our civilization in vessels, uh, the hands or containers people used to collect seeds or fruits. This presentation, the vessel representation, 
puts together the iconology of vessels of different, of different forms and their symbolic connection with nature. You will see the uterine sculptures by Ruth Azawa uh, made of uh, metal wire uh, and inside they have a porous membrane or uh, the full uh, sculptures by Toshiko Takaezu, these uh, strange beings by the surrealist uh, uh, artist Bridget Tichenor, uh, put together with the ovoidal uh, shapes by Maria Bartuzova. You will also see artifacts and objects like these anatomic models created by Aleta Jacobs, uh, the first woman who got a degree in medicine in the Netherlands. And she used this maquette for her anato anatomy lessons, telling about the evolution of the fetus, of the fetus. These uh, works will be surrounded by contemporary artists and their works, like this painting by Franz Zephyrin, an Haitian artist, uh, entitled The Slave Ship Brooks, depicting a ship, a notorious ship that had brought so many kidnapped Africans from uh, 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 from their native uh, villages uh, to bring them to the American coasts. And she's, uh, she is reverting the role of the colonizers, uh, representing them like animals uh, standing on the dock. You will also see the anthropomorphic uh, sculptures by Magdalene Odundu, this beautiful uh, sensual uh, vases uh, together with the concave uh, vases by Pinare Saniptak, but also the moving images by an artist from Uzbekistan, Saudat Ismailova, who tells us about these isolation cells where people could uh, remain in meditation or, or quarantine. Roberto Gil de Montes, a Mexican artist, uh, who responds to the birth of Venus by Botticelli, replaces the image of uh, that deity with a young fisherman lying in the shell, whereas uh, the Mexican artist Felipe Baeza tells us about queer bodies, migrant bodies, mixing up with nature, creating this uh, network of uh, plants. We will have a large uh, uh, installation by uh, 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 an artist creating a maze uh, made of uh, uh, earth. Uh, many other artists put together politics and social research with projects that re-examine local traditions and personal experiences. You see here some uh, large paintings by the Indian artist Prabhakar Pachpute, who has created a new painting describing the environmental disruption caused by the mining industry in India, or Ali Cherry, a Lebanese artist who will uh, propose a video uh, telling us about historic myths and the consequences of uh, uh, the environmental consequences of the construction of a dam on the Nile River. Ibrahim El Salai comes from Sudan, an artist who is now living in England, uh, has been drawing uh, obsessively portraits and figures on the boxes of his uh, medicines, uh, reflecting on his relationship with medicines and the pharmaceutical industry. And then uh, the last uh, historic uh, capsule, time capsule, the cyborg body, the seduction of a cyborg from uh, Lee Merchant Leeson, 
This presentation includes uh, historic works by artists who in the 20th century imagined new relationship between human and artificial, uh, imagining a post-gender, post-human future. You will see works uh, related to Bauhaus, Dada, but also futurism, and also more recent works some photographs by Marianne Brandt in which the artist uh, uh, photographs herself as reflected in these mirroring images or Marie Vasiliev's uh, a Russian artist who played with the mutating uh, identity in different masks. Anna, Anna Coleman Ladd, an American artist who during the First War, World War abandoned her profession to move to France, where she helped uh, soldiers who had been disfigured by the war with her mask, uh, creating prosthetics uh, for their faces to allow them to re-enter the society. Alexandra Exter is a futurist, a constructivist artist who in 1924 created the scenes and the costumes from the fir for the first sci-fi movie I, uh, in Russia, Ailita, three years before uh, the famous movie by Fritz Lang, Metropolis. She, show us, she shows us the Queen of Mars, Ailita, with uh, the costumes that have metal and mechanical parts in them. And you also see them in the small miniature uh, sculpture by Regina Casolobracchi, a futurist artist, but also in the robotic bodies by Anu Poder from Estonia. And finally, a great presentation by Kiki Koglenik, an, an, an Austrian artist connected to pop art. With her drawings and paintings, she represents uh, a an exploded and robotic self. Here, the exhibition changes in temperature. It becomes artificial, synthetic. The human figure disappears to leave space to the monumental works by Marguerite Humor, a French artist, welcoming the visitors with these cryogenic creatures. Whereas in the installation by Raffaella Vogel, we find a world in which animals are taking control over man. We will also have the radioactive post-atomic flowers by Titsumi Kudo, a Japanese artist, or the robotic machines by the Korean artist Mire Lee, who make us think of a digestive system of an imaginary animal. Tishan Shu, an American artist, in his paintings made with silicon, uh, is taking images from uh, surveillance technology. And then the Korean artist, Gu Mei Yong, plays with the bodies, uh, reconfiguring uh, uh, these robots uh, uh, like human bodies. Lean Ersham Leesum, a West Coast artist, has worked for many years to devoting her attention to the post-human. She will celebrate the 60th anniversary of cyborgs that were invented in 1960. And Diego Marcon, an Italian artist, is showing us a world where the characters in the video are covered with a strange artificial mask. The uh, exhibition will include an installation by the American artist Barbara Kruger, conceived for the spaces of the Corderie, combining slogan, words, poetry to celebrate and criticizing, uh, to celebrate and criticize a, a world of hyper-communication, contrasting with the silent sculptures by Robert Grosvenor and the Anthropic Garden by Precious Okomon. Outside the arsenal, there will be many works and installation by Giulia Cenci, Wu Zhang, Virginia Overton, Marianna Vitale. 
and we are happy we can continue our collaboration for the sixth year with the Victoria and Albert Museum in what we uh, um, in the Applied Art Pavilion, we have invited the American artist Sofia Almaria. Uh, she has created a new video exploring the collection of automata collection of the museum. And the artist focused in particular on this uh, uh, automa automaton, the Tipu Tiger, a tiger assaulting a British soldier and that was creating in, uh, in the 18th century. We are happy to continue our collaboration with Forte Marghera. There will be a new project by Elisa Giardina Papa, an Italian artist, telling intertwines uh, uh, historic Sicilian traditions on uh, Postmodern scenarios, uh, post apocalyptic uh, scenarios uh, shot in Gibellina Nuova. Biennale College, President Cicuto has already uh, spoken about this. The final uh, winners are Siminicchio e Bulungu, Ambra Castagnetti, Andro Eradze, and Kuzana e Violet Wami. It was very important for me to consider them as artists in exhibition. Their works will be scattered during the, uh, in, in the uh, exhibition. In one minute, I would like to tell you about the graphic identity of the exhibition. It was developed in collaboration with the London Studio, a practice for everyday life. These are the four posters you will see in the city, you will see in Venice and in the exhibition. We have decided to focus on details of the works in the exhibition representing eyes in particular, thus reflecting on this element as if it could be the door to enter our body. From the left to the right, you see details of works by Cecilia Vicuña, Felipe Baeza, Tatsuo Ikeda, and Belkis Ayon. The catalog will continue reproposing the same image, two volumes, one for the exhibition, the other for countries and collateral events. The guides, the short guides, will have the same cover. To conclude, I would like to tell you about the content of the catalog. There will be many critical essays and academic content, as well as uh, uh, historic contents. We have had more time uh, this, uh, with this exhibition. It was important to me to make the catalog, the catalog, the catalog richer uh, with uh, analysis in depth on uh, the works of art and the artists uh, in exhibition. There will be an essay by the authors you see on the screen, but also many other essays. I hope you will read, also including some reprints, uh, like uh, a tale by Leonora Carrington or the essay I mentioned before by Ursula Le Guin that has been translated into Italian for the first time. I stop here and pass the floor to President Cicutto again. Is that all? You have had two years to develop this. Congratulations. We have been joined by Stefano Ricci, representing the theater sector. We also have Claudia Ferrazzi with us, a member of the BOD. I see a friend of ours, Francesco Bonami, a former curator whom I thank, and other friends. I invite Carlo Giordanetti, member of Swatch uh, uh, and the CEO of the Swatch Art Peace Hotel. 
I complete my thanks to our sponsors, Swatch, our partner, main sponsor, Illy Cafe, Bloomberg Philanthropy, Vela Venezia Unica, and my gratitude, Maram, and clearly got Lipstein and Hamilton. We thank the Ministry for Culture, the institution of uh, the territory supporting the Biennale, the Municipality of Venice, the Veneto region, the Superintendency for Archaeology, Landscape uh, in the Lagoon of Venice, the Italian Navy, the donors, and the international and national institutions who have supported us in the realization of this exhibition. In particular, I want to thank Cecilia Alemani, and I must thank the uh, professionals of the Biennale who in these two years have always accepted everything I was asking for. They have overcome unexpected difficulties. They have added to the ordinary work we normally perform to organize festivals a great uh, uh, new spirit uh, uh, with the uh, creation of the Institute for Research on Contemporary Arts. I thank you all. And uh, the floor to Carlo, a friend of ours. Congratulations, uh, Cecilia. What you have said so far is fascinating. Swatch is again uh, uh, on the side of the Biennale. First of all, because it is uh, the most visible way for us to tell about our commitment with art and the artists in general in these 40 years of life. In 2023, we will celebrate our 40th anniversary. We will have two, two artists, uh, Swatch Faces 2022, uh, to give an idea of continuity. Uh, we will have a presence in the Sale d'Armi, in the Arsenale. With the works of five artists, we will tell our uh, residents for artists in Shanghai on the uh, banks of the river of Shanghai. There is this building that was created in 19... Uh, uh, 96 and Swatch transformed it into a resident for artists. During the difficult times of the pandemic, we have maintained life in it thanks to artists who have decided to continue working there. The five artists we have chosen are most of them Chinese artists. Uh, because of the difficulties of uh, the pandemic. They express different languages. We start from uh, uh, more figurative works to come to abstract works. One artist in particular, a Brazilian artist living in Switzerland, will create a, a new work paying tribute to Venice with a dialogue between a uh, Napoleon uh, sculpture and uh, uh, a lion of St. Mark's made with unusual materials, recycled materials, uh, with an interesting message uh, sent to the viewer. In the Giardini, where we are partners, uh, and therefore we are at the center of an ideal journey among the different pavilions, we have invited uh, a Thai artist, Navin Ravanshikul, who will uh, create a work which is closely connected with Venice and with the interactions among humans. He was in Venice in December 2021, challenging the pandemic. He started a communication with uh, a number of communities migrant communities who live in Venice, have been living in Venice for a number of years. They are not people, uh, local people. And from his interactions, from his cultural experiences, he will create this uh, very large work of art, a three-dimensional work of art. He has entitled as the description of the world, which was the original title of 
Il Milione by Marco Polo. His work is accompanied by a letter he writes to Marco Polo telling about his experience of a man of 2021 creating a parallel among the different cultural uh, phenomena that still exist and are still evolving starting from the times of Marco Polo. These are the two uh, uh, moments of the presence of Swatch accompanied in September by a special edition of uh, an artist watch uh, that Lavin will create with a different way of reading uh, the time on your wrist watch. Uh, thank you again. We are very glad uh, we can continue to be here with you again. As I've worked in cinema, I have uh, I have uh, expressed my gratitude to the Lazio region. Instead, I was meaning the Veneto region. Obviously, uh, I thank my friend uh, uh, Amerigo Restucci. The forthcoming events, we will have the activities for the carnival in Venice from February the 19th to the 27th, the International Art Exhibition from the 23rd of April to the 27th of November, theater from June the 24th to the 3rd of July, dance from the 22nd to the 31st of July, cinema, to the 31st of August to the 10th of September, and music from the 14th to the 25th of September. Again, uh, supported by ASAC from the 28th from the 28th of June, we will have uh, uh, an exhibition, Archeos, curated by Damiano Micheletto and by Officina. I want to thank all of you. This is a great way to celebrate my midterm, uh, the midterm of my mandate. Uh, two years have passed since I started my mandate as president of the Biennale. Thank you all again.